Hey my friends, welcome back to another DataBits video. I'm really super excited to show you what is in this box. Within this box is a piece of my past. That's right, within this box is a time capsule. It is an unopened version of my very first CD player, the Symphonic CD2000A. There's one in here and supposedly it's never been used. It was sitting in a warehouse for all of this time came from a company on eBay who basically retired from music and electronic sales and they found this in their warehouse. I guess somebody bought them out and they're just like, okay, we're gonna get rid of everything that's in your stock. And that CD player just happened to be in their stock. So here it is, we're gonna open this box together. As you can see, it is still sealed. In 1988, I was in high school. Let me show you what I looked like when I was in high school in 1988. Let's roll the clip. Stay still. <laughs> oh my god. That's Sherry's, man. Sherry Lynn. Yep. Better sign the front page. That's the only page that's really up. The front page. Oh, I'm ready? Take pictures of those people coming down the hallway. Walking that glass line. Let's see what is inside this time capsule made of cardboard. Carefully cutting the top open here. Flip it around. They did a nice boxing job on this for sure. Because what I'm hoping is that the original box is inside of this box. And we will find out. Yep, the original box is inside this box. There we go. You will notice the original seal is still on the symphonic box here. Digital compact disc player model CD2000 made in Japan. So you know this is part of the best stuff right here. The best stuff is made in Japan. So pull this box out. We will carefully throw that one aside. Take a look at this box here. As you can see here, we have a remote control system. We have a three beam laser pickup, random music search, and 15 programmable memory. Unbelievable. Now let's go ahead and open up the box and see what's inside. Isn't this exciting guys? This is like me becoming 18 again and buying my first CD player. Unbelievable, this is so exciting. All right, let's go ahead and carefully cut the original tape from the top of the box. Both sides, once again, going across. And uh, let's, looks like this went to this company. Looks like uh, Tetterboro, New Jersey. B&H Distributing Company, 4508 Bibb Boulevard, Tucker, Georgia. So that's where our company was apparently that went out of business. And as to why they held on to this for a gazillion years, it is beyond me. All right, so inside we have our Symphonic Corporation limited warranty very limited. I wonder if they would still recognize this warranty today. Seriously doubt it. I mean, is Symphonic even a thing anymore? I'm not even sure. And hopefully this was kept in a environmentally friendly environment. Otherwise, the inside of this machine may be completely rotted and useless. Owner's manual, model CD2000 compact disc player. All right, and we have the original remote in here with two, looks like national batteries. National batteries, look at that. Here, let's, let's get a good focus on those. There we go, our national batteries and our symphonic remote. There's our remote. Symphonic remote controller. Made in Japan. Battery slot, beautiful. You get a, uh, a very, very generic looking set of uh, RCA cables. But 
those things aside, put the remote aside, and let's take out the beast. Still in its original tomb of shrink wrap. And it left the factory way back in 1817. Oh, sorry, 1987. I was a little off on that date. Okay. Take this out of the plastic. Yeah, very nice, uh, I don't know, looks like a totally aluminum backing here. But hey, it's metal, right? It's not plastic. Speaking of plastic, we'll throw the plastic aside. And let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Just looks like a beautiful ocean. An ocean of black. And here's the front. This is the Symphonic CD2000. I'll be sure and show you a, uh, a close-up look at this. Get this machine outside on the table in the bright sunlight and get a nice pan view of this beautiful CD player. Look at that, amazing. Okay, the moment of truth. Will she power up? We're about to find out. Hopefully it's not like an old 1950s television where you have to power it up slowly with some uh, external power supply with a regulator on it. Here we go, we're gonna power it up. <gasps> we have power, we have power. Amazing! Now, will it eject? It will eject. Holy mackerel! Sounds a little squeaky. Before we attempt to play something on here, let's go over some of the amazing features of this beautiful machine. We have a, obviously, our CD loading slot is here. Remote sensor is here. Our display is right here on top. We've got a huge play pause button here, stop button. We have a headphone jack with volume control next to it. That is super fancy for something like this. Got our display here so we can toggle between the track and the time. We have our search back and forth. We have our track skip right above that, as well as a store button for doing our programming, which our program mode is right here, program mode open and close, and then we can repeat one or all. So as you can see here, this display is not very different from our multi-disc changer. In fact, I'll bring that out here in a moment. We can compare how the two look sitting next to each other. Uh, let's look at the back. And not a whole lot to see here on the back. You can see our manufacturing date is September of 1987. We have our serial number here, our RCA outputs for audio left and right, a bunch of information and where the power cord goes in. And the power cord still has that nice new feel to it. Doesn't feel like it's been drug across the floor, which happens with a lot of old retro technology I run across. All right, so let's go ahead and hook up a speaker and see if she'll play a CD. For our audio test, we're gonna try it out with this Tron Smart speaker. I know I mentioned this in just about every video that has audio associated with it, but, uh, and you know, Tron Smart is not like paying me to tell you this, uh, but this is a great speaker. It's 50 bucks. If you've got 50 bucks to blow, get you one of these. Trust me, you will enjoy the sound quality of this little speaker. I'm gonna connect my RCA cables onto the back, and then on the back of my Tron Smart, I've got a three and a half millimeter plug, jack. Stick that in there. We'll set it right on top here. Now, some of you are gonna barf when you see this. 
If so, please have a barf bag ready. Others of you are going to be like, whoa, you are like so cool, dude. Um, the reason I give you this warning or caution up front is because this was my first CD I ever purchased, or it may be one of them. This is Randy Travis, old 8x10, okay? So to bring this whole thing home, full circle, we've got to have the original CD that was played in this player for the first time, okay? So there it is, Randy Travis, old 8x10. Let's turn on the Tron Smart Speaker. Press the eject button. Put in this glorious CD. Look at it, it's so clean and nice. Strange drawer there, it doesn't really have, it doesn't have the insert for the three inch CD, which is kind of a disappointment, but what are you gonna do? We'll see if she spins up, she spins up. Look at this, this is insane. All right, now, because the copyright police will arrest me, I can't play you a lot of this music. I'll play you some other music later, but uh, let's go ahead and hit play. Here it goes, here it goes. Oh wait, no, 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 let's, let's use the remote. Let's use the remote. Okay, here we go. We're gonna hit play. Here we go. Play, play it, play it. Oh, it's going. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on. Try number two. Here we go. Come on. Just had to do a little waking up there. Dirt road in the twilight. Woods so cool and dark. Again, this has the noisiest laser pickup in it. I don't know what the deal is. We'll probably need to get in there and lubricate it a bit. It's probably a bit jacked up from sitting so long. Let's go to the last song. She's having a little bit of trouble. Try it a second time here. Yep, she may be completely locked up in there. There's probably old grease that is uh, jamming up the laser's movement. All right, so we'll go ahead and pop the hood on this sucker and see if it's something we can remedy. Okay, we have the hood taken off now and you're looking inside this pristine, beautiful, clean, entombed CD player. Here's your main board over here and uh, it's weird to see wires going around because most of the newer CD players is just ribbon cables. But uh, this one, we got some wires going around, kind of crazy. And I'm not sure what this part here is. I've never seen this or this kind of contraption on the front of one of these CD players or on the top of one of the CD decks before. Um, over here is your power supply, kind of minimal on the power supply side. And again, this was designed to be made cheaply. Um, so the, the parent company of Symphonic was Funai, so F-U-N-A-I. You can see one of their chips right there. There's a Toshiba chip here as well as one there. So my guess is that uh, there was a little partnership there, at least on parts from Toshiba. So over here, let's look at this uh, CD mechanism. So we're gonna power the unit on and take a look at what's happening under the uh, hood here. Well, look at that. Okay, so all this is doing is lifting up this part the, uh, the, the clamp, I guess, the CD clamp, that's all that does is lift that up. Isn't that interesting? Strange design. And it looks like the CD mechanism is just pulled by this part right here. So, uh, oh yeah, and there's a motor. So this motor, worm gear motor right here, turns and then pulls the CD lens across this way. I'll show you a close-up here in a second, but look, we still have some wet grease on there. Isn't that interesting? So I guess that's probably some kind of white lithium grease. Well, this is really crazy. I have never seen a configuration like this before. So again, we've got this motor here that turns, and then that's turning this wheel, which and then pulls the laser head back and forth down the track. There actually is one of those little bars underneath there. So there's that. Here's your laser pick up right here, and then there's that clamp. I'll go ahead and close it up for you again so you can see it. That is quite the curious design. 
honestly, when I owned this thing, I never took it apart. This is the first time I've ever seen the inside, so I am seeing it right along with you. So uh, let's go ahead and put a CD in. We'll put in a three inch CD and maybe it'll show us a little bit of, of what's happening there behind the hood. Hey, we even get to go in reverse. That's pretty neat. And I think what we are experiencing is the lack of movement on the part of this laser servo motor here, the one that's not turning the laser, moving the laser. So if I hit play here, Yeah, she just isn't doing much of anything. You're not seeing any movement from this part right here. And then what happens is she gives up. So we need to look at what is going on with this motor here. I don't know if this is kind of, this is probably seized up is what I would guess. It looks like a pretty chintzy motor that's down inside of there. So let's take a look at this motor and see if we can free her up. Maybe I'll even take the motor out and lubricate it perhaps that might get us going again okay guys so off camera I'm taking this thing apart and I happen to notice well looky what we have here this sucker has some kind of a shipping block in here who would have thought that that was a thing okay so we're going to have to get rid of that shipping block. I cannot believe this. This is absurd. Where was this? Where was this note? We can see the note right here. Attention before operating the unit, remove the three transit screws and the transit bracket. Okay. So basically before we are to operate this thing, we are to remove this screw, this screw, and this screw. Now, tell me, why would they put this on the bottom and not on a sticker on the front of the thing? I do not know. All right, so we are going to remove these three amazing transit screws. It's interesting that the player would function, sort of, with this still there. Unbelievable. And it's been so long, I do not even remember having to do this procedure. Like I said, it would make more sense if a sticker was stuck on the front of the machine so you would see it versus waiting until the thing doesn't work and then realizing, oh gee, Maybe I've done something wrong. Maybe I left out a very important step. If I removed the transit bracket or whatever you call that thing is, we probably would have had an experience more like this one. So let's put the disc in. Then I would have hit play. Off it would have went. And then I could skip through all of my songs. Yep, and it appears to be working fine now. So uh, let me put my microphone close up on this thing because I want you to hear all this little gurgling, twittering sounds that it makes as it's reading the disc. It's very fascinating. Pressing stop. Okay, now watch this little motor spindle right here as we're doing this operation, okay? Here we go. So I'm gonna hit play again. This time I'll talk over it. Okay. 
So the first song I went to was the tenth track, the tenth song. And now I'm going to gear back to the first track. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, now let's play some music that nobody cares whether I'm playing on this video or not. And let's listen to the sound quality. So let's go ahead and hit play. I can hit my uh, time track here. Got my uh, repeat one and all here. more disgusting country music for those who are disgusted. Now let's compare the look of this model next to the CD changer model. Ta-da! And here they are together. Now remember, in my last video, we talked about how this is a realistic marketed machine, but it was truly made by Symphonic. And now you can see the characteristics are very, very similar to the way these two machines were designed and their layout. And of course, this display, which includes Get some numbers on here for you. So now you can see the numbering system here, how that compares to the numbering system down here. From the side of the units, you'll notice that the CD changer goes out a bit further on the back side than the single disc CD changer does. And even though there are indentations here for screws, they didn't actually use those, but they use those here on the Symphonic CD2000 down at the bottom. Here are our two remotes. On the left, we have the CD changer, the realistic. And when I made the video, I didn't have this remote yet, so I wasn't able to show it to you. So there it is. And then compare that to the Symphonic CD2000 remote on the right. They're both very thin, but uh, they give you a little bit more real estate on the single disc changer than they did for the, uh, for the multi-disc changer, right? Very interesting. Well guys, what did you think? Pretty cool machine, right? And still working after all these years. If I had only seen this, which I found in the box as I was cleaning up here, it says, attention, before operating the unit, remove the three transit screws and the transit bracket. Well, this was supposed to be attached right here and it wasn't and I didn't see it. So it's not my fault, okay? So anyway, we got her going. Really, really happy with the unit. Glad that it actually works. And I can relive my early CD digital memories right here on this machine. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please share this with a friend. Subscribe using the link below or the link that appears on the video here shortly. You can be a Patreon contributor if you'd like. And those links, those social media links are all down in the description. And thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.